Those who are happiest are those who do the most for others. I grew up in a family that encouraged charitable works which led me to a life of service to others. I spent my life doing small things with great love. I was born on August 26, 1910 in Skopje to my parents Nicola and Jaina, who are Albanian. I had an older sister, Aki, and an older brother, Rizar. Skopje was home to many different types of people, including Christians, Jews, and Muslims. My family was very charitable and often invited homeless people to join us for dinner. My father, who was a successful businessman, traveled a lot for work. Sadly, when I was nine years old, he died. My mother thought he had been poisoned by political enemies because when he left for his trips, he was perfectly healthy. After his death, his partners would not give my mother and my father share of the business, so she had to start a small embroidery business in order to feed us. Even though my father died and I suffered terribly with malaria and whooping cough, I still had a happy childhood. I often sing in the church bar and pray daily with my family. When I was 12 years old, I heard God's voice calling me to serve others. I told my mother and she prayed about it, and when I turned 18, she supported my decision to join the convent. I was accepted into the Loretto Order, a group of sisters who brought Christianity to the largely Hindu and Muslim population in India. I needed to learn the languages used there, so I spent a few years studying English, Bengali, and Hindi. During this time, I also taught young children, and in 1931, I took my first class as a nun and became known as Sister Teresa. My next assignment was at a school for girls in Calcutta. For 17 years, I taught history and geography at St. Mary's School. Eventually, I accepted the position of headmistress of the school where I was referred to as Mother Teresa. Just outside the walls of St. Mary's School were the slums of Motihil. Due to extreme poverty in the area, many children were rags and ate garbage. Unfortunately, a famine in the nearby city of Bengal led to even worse conditions in the slums. Additionally, Hindus and Muslims were fighting each other for political power, and in 1946, a war broke out. Approximately 5,000 people died, and even more were injured. I was heartbroken and knew I must help the suffering people, so I requested to be assigned to the poorest areas of town. After learning basic nursing skills, I embarked to the slums to assist the poor. One day, I found a woman lying in the gutter. I carried her to the hospital, but sadly, they informed me that they were full. This situation inspired me to open a house called Normal Horide, or Pure Heart, a place for the sick and dying. It was important to me that no one had to die alone. I also helped lepers and orphans. I have always believed that there is great beauty in sacrifice. In 1979, I won the Nobel Prize and used the money to start another home. My last appearance in the United States of America was at the National Prayer Breakfast, where I shared with a pro-abortion crowd about the sin of abortion. In 1997, at age 87, I suffered a fatal heart attack. Even as a young child, I knew I wanted to spend my life serving God. I've always said, never worry about numbers. Help one person at a time and always start with the person nearest you. God has called us to be the hands and feet of Jesus to the world around us, so we must continue doing small things with great love.